Hi, everybody. This is Lauren Baker, founder of Search Engine Journal. And with me today, I have Mr. Kevin Rowe of PureLink. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Hey, Lauren. Great. Life's good. Awesome. Awesome. So today, Kevin's going to be going over a very in-depth and informative presentation on link building for e-com and affiliate-oriented sites. Kevin, if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking over to the first title slide, that'd be fantastic. Um, but before Mr. Rowe gets going, I'm going to go ahead and do some housekeeping to just let everybody know what to expect with today's presentation and webinar, and then also a little run through of our um, webinar system. So you should see the go to webinar control panel on your screen if you're in here. Uh, we're going to be launching a couple polls today through the uh, control panel. So we really, really encourage all attendees to be active in these polls really gives Kevin an idea of who you are and where you are in uh, this, uh, in the world of uh, link acquisition and link building. And so he can craft uh, some of his presentation around that. And then also we can bring up some of those points in the Q&A. Speaking of the Q&A, uh, after the first 30 minutes or so, we're going to switch from the presentation component of the webinar into the live Q&A. As you have questions during the presentation, feel free to go ahead and ask in the question box. We'll then be going through those questions and addressing them during the Q&A session. Anything we don't get a chance to uh, address, we'll be doing a follow-up as well. Um, speaking of follow-ups, one question that we do get a lot is, will this webinar be made available after the fact? The answer is yes. So. The webinar video will be sent to all registrants afterwards. We'll also be uploading to YouTube after a certain amount of time, but registrants get that video and recap information first. So thank you so much for registering and thank you so much for all of those who have attended. The official hashtag for today's SEJ webinar is hashtag SEJ webinar. Really easy to remember. So feel free as you're learning some of this great information on link building, uh, which can be applied to e-com, affiliate, or maybe even some other sites as well. Take screen shares, uh, share your experience on Twitter, really give everyone else a fear of missing out uh, because they're not here today. So if you choose to do so, use hashtag SEJ webinar, and don't forget to, um, to ping or tag Kevin and PureLink with at PureLink and at underscore Kevin Rowe. Kevin, I believe that's all of the housekeeping I'm going to be doing for right now. I'm going to be handing things over to you and really looking forward to all this great information. Thanks, Lauren. So I want to, uh, so I'll be talking about link building for e-com and affiliate sites. A lot of this is very basic um, fundamental components, but there are a lot of advanced um, aspects of what I'm talking about to here. Uh, so I'll be going over this, you know, selecting their approach. So any link building, um, link building campaign has these these general um, categories. So first off, you got to select the approach. How are you going to go about doing link building? Here we're going to be talking about specifically one of I have found to be one of the most effective um, approaches to uh, link building for e-com and affiliate sites. Now why group e-com and affiliate together is. There's a lot of similarities and I'll talk through what those are and how they differentiate from other types of link building, um, you know, say for a uh, education, a school or something like that. Selecting your target pages strategically. Um, I'm gonna do a live run through to actually how to do this. So one of the biggest things I'm gonna be focusing on is I want you to come in this, or come out of this with actually action items, things you can do to, um, uh, you know, start to build your prospect list. So I'm going, to, I'm going to help you identify how to select those pages. We're going to specifically talk about unlinked mentions uh, and what those are uh, as a tactic, because again, it's, it's very scalable, uh, low resource intensive and high, high ROI. Um, how to prospect those mentions. And here I'm going to give you a resource. So we've, I've built out, uh, my team has built out for PureLink um, a number of resources on how to do, how to prospect uh, unlinked mentions and how to use all these tools that are out there. As opposed to me going too deep into what the um, you know how to do it with these tools, I'm going to provide those resources for you, and I'll give you step by step how to prospect for mentions, and then also how to evaluate sites. Um, I'm going to explain pretty in depth uh, here about how to actually evaluate the sites you're going to go after for link building. So coming out of this, you're going to understand what pages, uh, what strategy do I need to use, what pages am I going to be targeting? E-commerce category pages, product pages, affiliate 
general category pages, home page, informational or article, long form content, whatever it might be. And then um, this will not cover the outreach and pitching component of the program because there's so much to, to go over in these four areas. But what I'm going to do at the end of this at the end of this uh, presentation, you're going to get a link, and that link is going to give you a list of every ecom resource my team has built out to help you in outreach, in pitching, um, uh, all these sites that you've prospect, what tools to use, how to use uh, um, you know Buzzstream or Pitchbox, whatever that might be. We have a lot of resources we've built out, and so so coming out of this, uh, even if you don't understand maybe how to how to apply this to the outreach process completely. Um, we'll have resources for you to take that and, and, and run with it. So who, who am I? Who's this guy who's going to talk about link building for e-com uh, and, and affiliate marketing? So I founded, um, I'm the founder and, and you know I, I say CEO of PureLink, but I'm more of a, a VP of strategy. I'm a VP of product management. And that's where my passion lies. I found, I've founded two seven-figure SEO companies uh, so far. Uh, I also have another company in AI um, development. And I've started and failed at over six other companies um, over the years. So this, this is not my first go at starting a company, trying to figure out processes, procedures, um, how to productize and, and standardize processes. So SEO automation and link building, the link scheme and quality rater guidelines are where my passion lies. Um, so I'm really interested in understanding how to automate things, not like the, the, the early 2000s automation where it's, it's bulk, you know, bulk uh, um, comments, spam or anything like that, I mean, how do you have conversations in bulk? How do you simplify and reduce the amount of time? How do you leverage automation, AI, machine learning um, in order to um, um, take some of the simpler tasks you have and, and automate those? And then I've worked in I've worked in major clients in insurance, affiliate, e-commerce, hospitality, health and beauty. You know, over the last decade, I've worked in in a lot of different verticals. And you know, I, I think what I'm going to talk about here. Is almost a culmination of everything I've, uh, you know, I've I've learned from a link building perspective, and link building hasn't always been easy for me. Um, the reason why I focus on link building is, you know, I, when I first started my original company, Road Digital, which was an enterprise SEO agency, we were working mainly through these large um, uh, agencies on enterprise scale, uh, and scale projects. So agencies throughout New York City and San Francisco, they would bring me in to build their their program. One thing, you know, we always found was when you know when the programs weren't working, what do you do? Or if you weren't getting the success that you needed, what do you do? Um, you know, how do you find? How do you actually um, take those programs that may not be working, and how do you actually get them to work? How do you how do you uh, get an ROI? How do you generate actually revenue and sales and leads from your SEO program? And for you know, my early years, I actually struggled with that. It was going really well around 2010 and 11 when it was easy. Then then you know after. You know, um, you know, a couple years in between 11, 12, and and uh, 12 and 2012 and 16, you know, things started to become harder. Um, and so what I did was I, I put all my eggs into the the link building basket, and I, I knew that was the solution. So I started building these solutions and and testing out these these programs so that I was able to um, have stronger impact. After that, uh, you know, I realized that link building, you know, link building was the missing component for a lot of not every program, but a lot of programs. And when we started doing more link building, programs started working better. So, um, so I started to 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 um, spend a lot of time, resources, um, technical resources, time and energy, and uh, financial resources into to building out PureLink. Um, you know, just to give you an idea, we're not going to be talking too much about PureLink here um, at all, really. But we have three different product lines: Mention Connections, Pure Context, and Natural Link. And pure context and mention connections are uh, very heavily e-commerce and affiliate product offerings in terms of link building. Um, we have about a 90% response rate. So I've built a program here that, and, and I hope you know, over my webinars, I'm, I'm basically telling people how I did it, uh, and, and, and I'm doing the same here thing in this webinar. Um, you know, we're getting 50 to 90% successful placement rates. Uh, you know, with pure context and mention connections because we have this database of, of relationships. Um, independent third-party influencers or bloggers, and we launched a program called Natural Link. is as a program for those you know your money, your life, or or the the SEOs really focused on EAT uh, type type link building approaches. And you want if John Mueller came in and he audited your program, he would you know and you were using a, n a Natural Link type strategy. Uh, John, now not that he would approve it or anything like that, but you might get a head nod out of him, or maybe at least a 
he wouldn't criticize you uh, sort of thing. I, I've, I've only seen him, and recently he is, which is really cool, he was, uh, he recently came out and said what was a uh, an example of a link building program he thought was uh, not against Google's guidelines. And so natural link, I believe that fits into that category. Um, and right here, you'll also have a free ebook um, for ecom link building as a re uh, you'll only be able to get um, off of this webinar. Um, so this link right here, which I'll, se I'll have sent out to everybody on this um, who attended this webinar, um, but the link is right here, um, so you can you, you can um, at least copy that in. I'll show this link throughout a little bit more. But this is our ebook um, uh, about ecom link building, and it's very very applicable to affiliate sites as well. So here is a quick survey. Uh, what's your level of experience on link building? One. What's, right. um, and go ahead, Lauren. I'm gonna go ahead and launch right now. Okay, what's your experience, your level of experience on link building? Uh, first, what's link building? Uh, second, heard of it, but never done it. Third, I've seen successful link building programs. Fourth, I've built links for projects before. And then fifth, I've planned large scale link building programs with teams. So we really like to get about 80% of you voting and answering. Right now, we're at the 65% range, so I'm gonna give a couple more seconds left, but it's good to see so much uh, responses coming in so quickly. We're at 77%. Um, so Kevin, I'm gonna close this in just a second. Once we hit that 80% mark, give everyone one final chance to go ahead and vote right now. Let's see if we can meet or beat some of the past uh, webinars that we've done with this amazing audience. So five, four, three, two, one. Last chance, closing the poll and sharing the results. Kevin, I'm not sure if you can see these on I your can. end. Okay, cool. So uh, we have 49% of you have heard of it, but never done it. 29 have built links for projects before. 11% have seen successful programs. 7% have planned large scale link building programs of teams. And then 5%, hey, what's link building? What is this stuff we're talking about? Great. So what, is, what does it say to you? It says any there are more there? people. Go ahead. Sorry. thought that was a question. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any insight there? Uh, I, I think that there's more people on this call um, with a lot more experience. So I think we'll have a lot of information for both, for all the, the whole range and the whole gamut here. Um, so what is the people like, what is link building? We'll talk about like what is, you know, I, and I'll try to, to tailor the presentation a little bit to that. And, but even for the people who have built these large scale link building programs, I'm going to talk about scalability. I'm going to talk about a specific project that you can work on, a specific type of link building that's probably, especially in affiliate and e-commerce, is going to allow you to scale up your link building program as well. Um, and even for the people in the middle, um, you know, this is really tailored for you, but I'm going to have uh, a lot of stuff for the what is the link building crowd. I'm going to help you through this. And then the more advanced uh, group, what I'll do is I have all the resources. I have a resource library and I'll have those that's just gonna be a lot more advanced and with a lot more detail for you as well. So, so stick through the whole, whole thing and I'll, I'll get to everybody, I promise. All right, what are unlinked mentions? So this is for the, the uh, entry level, but I think there's some, some stuff here for mid and some advanced as well, because I think the application um, is really important. And so why UBMs? I have been able to find with unlinked mentions, uh, a conversion rate, that means a, a successful placement rate of 50 to 90%. Um, so, so um, you know, with that, in, in a normal outreach program, uh, you're probably looking at, you know, in, in much other, many other categories or through many other strategies, you're probably looking at, um, you know, a conversion rate, a successful placement rate, maximum 5%, it uh, depends how you build your list, but but you know between one to 5% is actually very normal. Um, I've been able to get up to 50 to 90%. Um, so unlinked mentions go way beyond what I think everybody thinks. Now this is, um, so this means you're going out there and you're finding articles, existing articles um, that are already live on websites. And then you're asking them with very creatively pitching them um, uh, to secure links. Now, there are certain keywords or, or categories you can start to focus on. So first off, company brand. You can also do product brand or like a you know a specific product line. 
retail brands. So if you sell or if you li or your affiliate site lists a bunch of, of products uh, or, or you sell a lot of really popular products, executive brands, like what your name of your executives or uh, key people in the company and then thematic, the actual product name. And I'll go over, I'll go over what those are. So some examples of brands, again, if you have, not every one of you are going to have a strong brand, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways to find, um, you know, these UBMs. So you can start to look for, for example, if I was uh, every table, I might search for articles mentioning every table and then try to secure a link in those. Uh, an example of a product brand. So Bulletproof Coffee, for example, or um, Tile is a product brand. So Tile is a product. Uh, the, the company that owns it is happened to be Tile as well, but um, um, you know the product is named Tile. So you're gonna go out there and actually find the product and the name of the product, um, not just the company, but the product you're selling or that your brand sells. So typically CPGs or direct-to-consumer CPGs would use this strategy. Um, now when it comes to retail brands, this is if your e-commerce site or your affiliate site has listicles, comparing brands, comparing websites, or comparing some major brands that have, have a lot of, of brand mentions online, you're gonna, you're gonna really win with this strategy. You know, for example, if you're working on Acer, and you have a, uh, you're gonna search for a lot of Acer companies mentioning Acer, or excuse me, articles mentioning Acer, um, or a more maybe with more detail. Well, again, this is the type of thing that you're gonna be able to tailor the messaging to those types of articles at, at a fairly strong uh, rate. Another example of executive brands, again, there's Uber, again, there's Uber, you know, um, um, popular people. Uh, Lauren, you know, I, I didn't mean to put you at the end of this, but you're a very niche relevant influencer, right? Uh, that's what I mean by that. So, you know, one side we got Elon, but then you have like Gary Vanderchuk or, uh, you know, Lauren, like like there's general applicable influencers out there, but don't forget that you have influencers inside your company, right? Um, there there may be people who are, are con, you know, just niche contributors. They're well known in their niche. That's okay. You can still find a lot of people talking about you. And that might be a, a really good way to find unlinked mentions. And the last, the last one is thematic. Thematic, you will find that there's going to be a lot more mentions available. And this does not apply to, this applies to um, e-commerce or affiliate sites that maybe you don't have the most popular products, right? So maybe you don't have major brands that your list or your comparison pages, or you don't have category pages or, uh, with listing all the brands. Um, um, that's okay. So you can take a, this approach right here called thematic. Uh, searching is where you find, you know, for example, this Nordic track treadmill. Maybe you're just looking for people uh, 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 who have talked about commercial treadmills or best commercial treadmills. Then you can get a link to the Nordic Track page. Um, there's a lot of avenues you can take. So this is just a general overview. Um, now what I'm going to talk about really is how to find them. So, so actually, how do you find these unlinked mentions? What tools do you use? Um, you can manually direct email and find these people. You can use standard prospecting tools or you can fully automate. So there's, there's processes that are extremely slow. And there's fully automated process that are are, um, are are a lot faster and less time consuming. Where the technology is today, I don't think is where it should be in the um, link building space or even the SEO space for that matter. So there is no real full automation. Um, there is automation on uh, to some degree on prospecting and things like that. But um, right now there is no real tool out there that fully automated. I had to build my own using um, using robotic process automation techniques. And, and um, you know, I built a massive search engine to, to help our team actually find all these mentions um, at scale and then, then uh, uh, have, you know, semi-automated, it's not fully automated, semi-automated one-to-one conversations. So it's much more scalable. One tool you can use is Moz's Fresh Web Explorer. I'm not gonna go into it too deep. I have a video that will go over that extremely deep for you and I'll share, with that, share that with you at the end of this. So you'll have a link to it and you'll be able to um, use that as a resource later on. Moz, uh, the pros and cons of this are a lot smaller database. It has grown since the new CEO has taken over. Um, I believe they've been focused very heavily on growth. And um, you know, I think that I think that it's a, it's a good tool to find it, but you're gonna have very few mentions in here. So the database is, is a little small. This is not the only tool you should go to, but it's a good start. Uh, Ahrefs um, uh, Content Explorer. Uh, this is one of my favorites, and this is what we used before we built our own mention uh, connections tool, um, which again is an unlinked mentions, uh, a tool that finds unlinked mentions at like a 50 to 90% successful placement rate. Um, Ahrefs, I, I think that it's a little bit more robust. They have more data uh, when it comes to the the, uh, the placements. They have more 
features and filtering. Uh, and the database has, to me, seems like it's higher in a number of different areas, larger database, a larger data set. Um, and then you can use things like this to go into Google as well. So just using search operators in Google. So you can go into Google with search engine journal, for example, in quotes, um, and then typing in in text colon search engine journal dot com and no Facebook. So negative, that neg that's a negative sign right here. So negative in text and negative um, in site. So that means basically, hey, I don't want to find any links on Facebook and I don't want to find any, um, uh, you know, text or links with this um, uh, with this URL. So we created, I had one of my product managers create an extensive, um, uh, detailed step-by-step -step guide about how to do that in Google, Ahrefs, and in um, Go and in uh, Moz. So again, three great tools. There are other tools out there. SEMrush, as um, you know, uh, they have some capabilities that are helpful for that. Um, but I'd say these three are the, the uh, these three paths are your best option. Um, so I will also have a resource page on the on our website, and I will email it out to everybody so you have access to all of these videos. Uh, they're also on the PureLink YouTube channel as well. But how to find uh, mentions for SEO backlinks is the name of the video, and here's the URL. Selecting the right page is a little bit harder. So you have four types of pages I, I consider an affiliate or e-comp. You have uh, the home page, home page, grouping or category pages. So a, a home page, everyone knows what it is, but the grouping or category page might be, um, you know, might be a a page that lists all of the treadmills that you have. Sometimes it's an article. Uh, for a lot of affiliate sites, that might be actually long form article based and reviews and, and information. Not all of them, but many of them do have that. Um, in the e-com, it's just going to be typically product listings. Um, and so these grouping or these general pages that list a lot of different brands are great for link building. They're also your highest search volume, highest priority pages, um, uh, more often than not. Then the individual item pages. So these are like your product pages on, on um, possibly your product pages on affiliate or your product pages on e-com. Um, and then some on affiliate might just have like this individual page. Maybe it's a location. Uh, you know, if you're an affiliate site that's based on multi-location SEO. Um, maybe it's a location page or a general state page or a, or a country page or something like that. So categories could also be a country page, individual could be the state or the or or the city or something like that or or the brand. And then informational pages. The reason why I break this out differently is informational in e-commerce is not normal uh, for many sites. There's a lot of pushback. A lot of people are conversion highly sales focused, and informational content does not have the tendency to be highly correlated with sales or at least the traffic to those pages, more often than not, are not driving sales. I found that's been the major holdup. In affiliate, it's a whole different ballgame. In direct-to-consumer CPG, you know, who is doing e-com, uh, I think it's a little bit different. You tend to do more informational type content. Informational is great, but I, I still think that your category pages and your individual product page and your homepage linking shouldn't be left out, especially since those category pages are going to be the high search volume, high important keywords. Now there's two different processes I take and I directed my entire company, every company I've had, I've directed them to take this process. There are, now I will say this, there are some people that are against, this is you know maybe reverse engineering the algorithm they say, this is not a full reverse engineering process or protocol. Uh, some people believe that it, you can't do it. You can't actually, um, it doesn't matter how much you analyze the SERPs, you're not gonna come up with a um, you know, there's just no way to reverse engineer because of the complexities of it. And I don't believe that. I disagree with that. I've seen a lot of people make that argument. Um, and I have my personally and across a lot of different projects use this process to drive um, improved ranking through better anchor text optimization, selecting better pages, um, selecting uh, um, um, better site quality and better link profiles. First off, the homepage based links. Um, when you link to the home, you should link to the homepage when it's a you know, top targeted um, category level keywords for ranking, right? Um, you have a new site. If you have a new site, I definitely recommend integrating homepage, especially an affiliate. Get a lot of brand based anchor text. Um, and then if you're, so if you, if you have a, a, a new site that needs brand presence or you're just, you're actually launching a new site um, for early awareness, you know, get started early. You don't even have to have the site live to start link building to the homepage. You can have placeholder, teaser content. Um, 
or if you want to build site-wide contextual relevancy. So if your site is about one topic, which I, I would hope it, you know, many cases it should be, or, or should there should be an over, you know, overarching topic. Linking to the homepage can allow you to, to categorize, or at least from a contextual relevancy standpoint, from a, as an algorithm, uh, optimize that the entire so the entire site fits within that within that category. Um, category page links as well. You know, I think they're they're very important, um, but it, it depends on when you need to do this. Are you targeting, you know, category level keyword ranking, right? High search volume, top level category. So treadmills, treadmills under fifteen hundred dollars, um, or best home treadmills, or um, treadmills with uh, uh, you know a, com a computer screen or something like that. Are they usually high search? These are usually high search volume keywords. Um, top content is transactional. You want to you want to focus on transactional or directional type content uh, and links. And um, your business goals are more short term lead focused and sales focused. So you don't have to have a category. You know some affiliate sites are lead focused, um, but there is a um, you know if you're if you're you know you, you yourself you're the owner or your boss or you're self accountable to to sales. Um, you know, one of the things you're going to want to do is get more of these category pages ranked because that's where the that's where the money is, right? So these are your money pages more often than not. Um, you know, so usually some affiliates have more singular money pages, but um, that's a good example. You want to look. You want to list individual product pages or link to very specific focus pages. So like for affiliate, you know, you might just have a focus page around one topic or one uh, product or or, or um, company or service or whatever that might be. Um, if it doesn't change, you, you, it's okay to link build to these. Some people I, I've experienced, uh, especially in fashion and you know with high end um, uh, high end wedding products, for example, the the pages might turn over very frequently. And so if the, if your tech team doesn't do a 301 redirect typically, and you don't have a lot of control over that, which is very normal in bigger companies um, for for ecom or for whatever reason you don't 301 redirect it, you might not want to be uh, link building to a product page. If it has low search volume keywords as well, so let's say you have hundreds of pages but very low search volume, um, that might be another reason for you to 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 switch because you want to spend you don't want to spend ten thousand dollars on one page ranking if you're only going to get three clicks a month and that product sells at five hundred dollars per right. So you have the balance your ROI and, and where you're pointing those links. Um, and uh, but I do like the link build if you have multiple pages under one category. That helps build up that category, especially if, like, let's say you want to, uh, under treadmills, you want to go after Nordic Track only, and then you're only linking to all those Nordic Track treadmill pages. Um, uh, you know, even an affiliate or e-com, the treadmills reviews is an affiliate site, um, but in e-com as well, same ideas. If you build up links to the sub pages, that's going to help the main page rank, your category level page rank. Um, educational pages. So if your goals are six to 12 months or longer, I, I do believe these are, are better. If you want to grow your domain authority as a whole, um, or if you want to rank for a lot more keywords, just don't expect immediate short-term conversions when you're link building to these pages. Um, but in, in especially in gambling, financial, loans type categories, you need to take this approach. If you're in, if, you, if anybody's on this call is in gambling, uh, or affiliate sites for gambling, uh, or anything in financial, or or gaming, or or marijuana as well. Um, so the whole cannabis industry, same idea. Uh, getting links to those category pages is harder. Getting links to those informational pages are much easier, and they do have uh, they if you can internally link, and it does help build the authority of the whole site, which makes those category pages rank, uh, and the money pages rank for sure. Uh, it's a little more long term though. Think six, twelve months out, not three, six months out. I'm going to give you a quick live run through of what I actually do. So I've brought up a um, an example here for you. So for example, on best coffee, so let's say we want to rank a page for best coffee and we want to figure out what pages we're going to be link building to. Uh, I like to go into, I, I, again, I like to use Moz. Um, some people really aren't big Moz fans anymore. Um, there are some cool features in here, especially the SERP analysis feature I do like. Um, so, for example, we're going to look in here and we're going to see, all right, what type of content is ranking? So that's number one for me. Uh, so I can see there's um, more informational content ranking, listicles, um, best coffee beans, food and drink. This looks like it's another more informational article. 
you know, this is which um, best coffee on Amazon under my recipes. This is a general, I think I would consider this maybe a general category page, but informational in nature. This to me suggests that a lot of the stuff that's going to rank here is going to be informational in nature, not conversion focused, um, or they're going to be more information conversion focused, like you just saw here. Um, so these long form informational articles might have a tendency to rank a little bit better while you're you know, while getting links in here as opposed to an e-commerce category page. Um, so that's number one. So I would want to find out if I had any content like that on my site to start link building, informational content around it, and then compare it to these. Um, I, you can use a tool called um, uh, Cognitive SEO, which does a good job, or SEM Rush's tool that compares your content to the top ranking content. It's a good starting point. It's not extremely advanced, but uh, I think it's a great starting point. So from there, let me close out these windows. I like to look at, uh, I'll take a look at some of the top ranked content here and see what, um, um, you know, see how much traffic they get. Uh, I will also want to see for, um, you know, for our site. So let's say this is our site. I'm gonna see what keywords this page ranks for. Uh, or I might look at our site as a whole and see what key, what sites rank for the keyword, what pages on my site rank for the keyword best coffee. Um, so in SAM Rush, you can do uh, filter by keyword, best coffee. So now we'll pretend this is my site. Um, and I'll be able to find all the pages and I'm gonna look for pages that are a little bit more informational in nature, right? So, um, so I'm gonna wanna try to find best coffee reviews. This, you know, I've got a couple here that have ranked in page one. So I'll take a look at this page. Um, you know, so maybe this page is a little, maybe this page will work for that. Um, it is already ranking for very similar keywords. Maybe we can get a rank for the word best coffee too. But maybe it's not, maybe it's not ranking because it's not specific enough, doesn't have much, enough information. So you can either build out this page for more information or go select another page. Um, and you notice also the homepage ranks here as well. So can you get the homepage ranked? Uh, you know, pro tip. If you can get the whole page rank, it's likely you're gonna be able to rank that better than an internal page if it's about a general topic around your category. So if you're selling coffee and that's all you talk about is coffee and selling coffee and the best coffee, your homepage could rank for that. You know, that, that might be a, a good page to target. Finally, um, in Ahrefs, I would take the site, I would upload it and look at the best buy links page. So I'm gonna look, also look at the number of links we have pointing to the number of links we have pointing to each of the pages. So I might upload, um, you know, I might upload, you know, the page I want to target, see how many links that it has. If it has a lot of links, then maybe it's not something we need to target. Um, or maybe it's just the link profile for that page. So then I will, uh, then I'll take the page. Let's see here. Well, my computer's slowing down on me, so I'm gonna give you a quick little um, how-to. Here we go, highest rated article. So just looking at this page, so now what I'm gonna do is look at the anchor text profile of the page. Um, so it says a lot of coffee reviews in here, about 555 links pointing to this page saying coffee reviews, quite a bit. So for me, this would suggest, hey, we probably link building to this page and just throwing anchor text to it might not get it ranked. There's might be a content issue. So I'd probably move on to the next page. Um, uh, so you can also do that by going here. And I would delete this, and maybe move on to the next page. So again, I'm gonna be looking at the number of links pointing to the page. I'm also gonna be looking about, and you can get a lot of that at, right out of the overview uh, as well. I'm gonna look at the anchor text, see if it's over-optimized. So look at it, see, does it have too much an optimized anchor text pointing to the page? In affiliates, this is kind of normal. In affiliate and in some e-commerce, it's normal to have a lot of anchor text that, that's optimized or maybe even around a specific word or close to the phrase. Um, E-com, a little less so. Uh, so make sure you're analyzing, um, you know, analyzing uh, um, for your niche and the niche that you're in. Um, and then one last one last component to this also is um, um, I also want to look at to see if I'm actually going to be able to rank my content. So the final thing is, can I rank this content against 
you know, the competitors for best coffee. So I'm going to be looking at what's the page authority, what's the domain authority, and how many links do they have pointing to the specific page? There's a lot more story to there to be had, but um, and I've, I've seen a lot of sites with low domain authority actually rank, uh, you know, above the 50s, above the 80s, and you can see it here. Uh, the 50s are, the, you know, smaller domains are actually starting to rank, uh, even getting gaining speed on the 80s. Uh, or outranking a higher domain authority. That's normal. You're never going to see a direct correlation. Um, but you do want to dive in, see how many links are pointing to the page, whether the anchor text of those links, um, and then start to see how that your site compares against them. I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. Uh, you can go really in depth, but uh, that's a general process, and a lot of it's going to be intuitive. Um, but that's the general process for, um, you know, I would direct my team to go through uh, in order to to find those. Next, I'm going to talk about evaluating prospects. I will move a little fast through this. I do have a full video um, that will do, that will walk you through step by step how to evaluate sites for quality. Um, I do believe that this is an important step. So much so, I've spent a lot of time building out our own scoring system called PureGrade, which is a a score. It doesn't. It's not a, a metric for like DA or trust flow. This is a manual reviewed score. So you have to manually review your site. So manual reviewed score. Uh, scoring system based on weighted variables. So I have a, I have a team that will go out, like uh, the Google Quality, Quality Rater Guideline team. I have an internal, small, much smaller team uh, doing very similar things and grading it uh, uh, against an algorithm that we've put together. It's simple algorithm, not not a not a real one. You can build your own score. I uh, I was I would take a lot of classes on course uh, Coursera. You can actually build your own. Take this course on Coursera if you really want to learn about this, boosting accuracy by weighting variables in Google Sheets. This is a good little thing to do. Um, so that you can build your own scoring system if you're really into this. So for those advanced people who've built these big teams you know, early on, this is going to be a great next step for you. And even if you're entry level, I think understanding weighting variables and how to do that very easily in Google Sheets is going to be, uh, it's a great, great thing to know how to do. All right, so for the keys to a great assessment, you got to weight each element. Don't just look at one and say one and done, right? So you're not just going to look at the site and say that looks ugly. I'm out of here. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of people do that. I've guided tens of thousands of sites being reviewed in, in my career. Um, and the biggest mistake I see is you don't weight all your elements. Look at all the elements together. There are certain points where you want to cut off, and I'll explain what those are. But but weight all your elements, and you're going to build a footprint. Not just look at you're not just going to look at one element. You're going to look at 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever you think. But it's got to be a, it's got to be a lot more than just basic variables. So you, there's a difference between metrics and quality. Metrics are domain authority, trust flow, citation flow, traffic, things like that. That's not quality. Um, those are performance. Quality is what is the content? Is it is it good content? Does it link out to money pages? You know, is it junk content? Um, are is the author fake? Is it a fake site? Is it a made for SEO site? These are all things you need to know, and that's quality. It's not metrics. Metrics and quality mean two different things. Um, so, so much I don't even think quality should be a, a, a term we use in link building because I don't think it necessarily represents what it means. Um, the, but metrics are perf you know, performance. Yes, you do want to go after that. Maybe use it as a guiding post. And quality is I want that site, it, but it's going to it's it's a lot of work to do so. Area Digital, Patty Morgan. Uh, did a survey saying what site, what metrics do people actually use um, when evaluating site quality? Um, domain authority from Moz was a big one. Domain rating from Ahrefs. Uh, one moment here. I seem to have a technical problem, and my uh, presentation just crashed. If you bear with me a moment, oh. I will have that up and going in about 30 seconds. No problem. I see a very lovely image of myself on your screen. So yeah, I doubt, I, I had to go to your LinkedIn <laughs> to pull the picture for earlier. <laughs> I just did that I earlier today. Flatter. So um, we got a lot of really good questions that have come in uh, around linking. But one thing I wanted to really get an idea of is if everyone attending right now could just drop like their their favorite tool that you utilize um, for link prospecting, whether it's Moz, Ahrefs, um, even other uh, tools that we haven't discussed today. That will really give me an idea of, of what you're working with. I see Ahrefs, Ubersuggest, SEMrush, a couple of those are coming through already. So it's, it's always good uh, to have an idea of, of what tools folks prefer because 
as well. There's a really nice mix. Some of us only speak Moz. Some of us only speak Ahrefs, right? When we're talking about different uh, quality metrics and things like that. So LSI graph, very interesting. Good stuff. Looks like you have the presentation back, Kevin. Yeah, I do. That was a right. easy fix. Easy fix. Um, okay, cool. Link score by Verve is another one. So if anybody hasn't uh, aren't familiar with that, they're out of uh, the UK. It's it is a link building. It's an SEO company, content marketing company. Um, you know, and I, I've been impressed with the score. I think that it's something that's growing, uh, specifically in Europe. But they are doing an interesting thing. It's hard to use. It's clunky, but the metrics I think they got. I think they got the metrics down. So if you can bear with that, that's it's a great tool. Uh, link score by Ver V E R V E. Um, and then there's Google Quality Rater guidelines. So all those those are metrics. Again, now we're talking about quality, quality scoring the site, the reputation of the site. Very different. Um, Google Quality Rater guidelines. Although I'm not recommending you do this, is like they even Google thinks about this from a simpler standpoint. Like is a low quality or the high? What's the highest quality? And what is it in between? They have a lot of variables. Um, I'm not going to go through any of those right now because there are a lot of them and it's very in depth. But I'll say this. Um, this is not the this I would not follow their guidelines completely, um, and unless it's like a your money your life type scenario, you might want to get a little bit more stringent with them. Um, but for the most part, this doesn't tell you what types of sites you need. So I want to help you understand what type of sites you need. There are six given areas we'll go over. I'm going to touch on them, and then I'm going to direct you to the video where I go through each one of them very very in depthly. So first off, with the content on the site. Secondly, administrative. You know, uh, all the admin pages and the administrative components of the website. What's the link profile look like? The authorship, like who is the person? The authority of that, who talks about them? Who, you know, are they an expert in their in their field? Technical. I'm not saying load time. I mean, like the technical elements of the, of the site, you know, the technical components of it. Um, so I'll go through what each one of these actually mean. First off, from content, what you want to look at is actually read through the content on the site. When you're doing a quality review, read through the content. You're going to look for commercial links. If they have any links pointing out to money pages on articles, and the articles seem light and simple, um, typically more often than not, they're they're not great unless they're getting a ton of traffic. Um, I, you know, I, I like to to cross reference that and see if they're getting a lot of traffic. If they're getting a lot of traffic, I'm usually more flexible. But if they have too many commercial looking links, there's a problem. I also like to look at the navigation. Is it way too general? Um, do they mention any keywords? No, no keywords like gambling, porn, payday loans, things like that. Um, how frequently do they post? That's all things you should be looking at. More frequent doesn't necessarily mean be always mean better, but um, you know, are they doing it once every six months? Hasn't there not been anything in a couple months, or are they doing it once a week or monthly or something like that? Should be a weighted factor. You know, another example is the about us. So is the about us too general? Does it not actually give any information about them, the page, the brand, the direction of the site, the content. If not, there's something wrong there. Or here's a big one, and I always say this is the only. This is one of the main factors, or the only factors I say, don't move any further on this site and don't use them. If they mention buy, do, follow links, I see that so much and it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So they're basically selling do, follow links on the site and they advertise it and they put it in their text. And Google can algorithmically could pick that up. And so just avoid those sites. Um, even if they get traffic, I'd still suggest you avoid those. Um, administrative pages, so again, the advertising, the guest post page, or the inf is the info there, phone number, address, email. Um, the link profile, I think, is a harder thing to analyze. It does take more time. Um, a couple quick tips here. Does it have too many excessive links pointing to one page? Like, does it look like they were building links to one article that was targeting money keywords? Like, if they were doing that, there's a good chance the site is, um, uh, that's a very important weighted variable. I would take that very seriously. Um, does it have a low DA or DR, domain authority or domain rating? Again, don't pay attention to this too close. I would take a, a link from a scientist, um, you know, that had a site with a DA 20 or, or five even, if it was great content. I'm okay with that. Relevance trumps DA almost any day. Um, and there's, it does have a lot of non-relevant links. So I was getting a lot of links from categories. I have nothing to do with this, the site. Um, authorship's a little bit easier, so you can look on the page, see if they actually have an author byline and a name. Uh, is, can you find an About Us page with the author or their profile? Um, can you find an author page? Um, also, one of the things, like look for, make sure, the, see if the author is from your country um, or are they outside of the country. So, like typically, if they're a contributor from in the country, maybe they're well known in that geographic area versus like maybe they're from 
maybe you're, you, uh, you'll you see you have writers from China, South America, maybe Canada, as opposed if you're working in the US, but maybe you wanna find somebody from the US. The reputation, um, I, I would say, I would take this with a grain of salt um, in terms of like how you evaluate reputation. Google Quality Rater Guidelines does a fairly uh, strong job of identifying what you should be looking at and comparing what's a high reputation versus low reputation to a degree. I'm gonna define it differently. So for me, um, for me, it's about, um, um, you know, for me, it's about um, do, do people link to their content? Do they share it on social? Now I know Google does not take the social signals and directly attribute it to ranking, that's okay. But I do think they factor that in to some degree if there's natural looking shares and links coming into the, the pages. So a much more in-depth way to look at this, you can find our identify site quality for link building. Uh, this is actually more of a webinar style, but I went, I spent over an hour, well over an hour going through this with one of our team members. And we documented um, how to identify site quality more in depth into each of those into each of those areas. So you can go here. I will get this link out to you when uh, at the end of this, but um, uh, here's the link and this is the name of that, that uh, video on our um, YouTube station as well. So um, that thank thank you. I appreciate uh, everybody's time on here. I will get those uh, all of that out. Uh, you can you can reach me by going to at underscore Kevin Rowe or at PureLink and find me on Twitter. I mainly talk about link building on my Twitter or natural outreach or uh, ecom and affiliate uh, based link building. Um, you can also reach PureLink um, at info at purelink.com if you're interested in PureLink uh, services. And then one of the um, one of the team members would reach out. In addition to that, you have a resource, purelink.com forward slash e dash com, C O M M dash resources. And that will, um, you know, that will give you um, uh, uh, a lot of resources. So we have, again, videos, blog posts, ebooks, all to help you um, with more general information or if you want to get deep, deeper into uh, how to prospect, how to actually develop links. This will give you that, those tools. Uh, and then we can move on to the, the Q&A. Outstanding, thank you so much. Um, all good stuff across the board. Uh, just a reminder, we've dropped a couple of the links that Kevin has mentioned in, in this chat, but we're gonna be sending out all resources, presentation and video assets afterwards as well uh, for all of you. So thanks so much, Kevin. I have a couple of questions that have come in, uh, some that are coming in right now but I wanted to get things started with Emma. So uh, Emma deals with a lot of startups and new websites that have low or almost no domain authority out the gate. Any tips on best ways to get websites linking to newly launched websites to build that foundation of authority? Yeah, so first thing you're gonna do is, um, it depends on the niche you're in and the vertical and what types of sites. Sometimes you need to, if it's gambling versus non or, or, or whatnot, so it's all different, right? Um, but I would say this, first off, some silly things I wouldn't normally recommend you do, but you should do with a new site. D do directories, do forums, not comment, You know, just make sure you have listings, get your social profiles up, get that content shared, just start with that. It's not the same type of link, but it, it, that's a kind of a foundational stuff or citations if you're local. Just get all those easy uh, type of links out of the way. Depending on the vertical, maybe you'll wanna start with like really high search volume PR based pitches. Um, so that means unique research. Uh, I can provide also a list of, of, of free government resources for data. I mean, you can pull out data for free, create a unique study out of that data. And, it, and it's all secondary research that already exists. Um, uh, I have a full resource library of, of all free resources you can use, find data. Uh, and then build a, a nice informative article piece, something that's unique. I am doing this right now. We had just launched a microsite, a full blown kind of, uh, um, when I say microsite, I mean like a very large, well done uh, site that's for affiliates. Um, we are creating one unique study and we're, we're distributing that to a major group of influencers. So we, we actually worked with influencers before launching the website and launching the study. And then we had sleep experts come in and, and help us do um, uh, do, do uh, the study and verify it. Now we're having the sleep experts actually share it with their social, and then we're using it to do outreach to uh, authors and, and and other people that need that that will find that that information uh, unique. Again, a lot more strategies there, but I think 
get all those low hanging fruit out of the way first that are really easy to do. Get a really big, unique informational piece, like a launch piece ready, and then build your relationships with influencers or have people contribute to that blog, like uh, um, contribute uh, uh, quotes or things to it. Like really get the, the, the brand kind of moving. Yeah, and even though the, the company may be new or the site may be new, um, typically the staff, founders, people like that have a background, right? So there's, there's already credibility that can be added to what you're launching out there from a, um, whether it's a, a PR campaign around a study or participating in question and answer style forums and things like that. So one thing I would add is to make sure your site does not always look like it's brand new. So sometimes a startup may launch a one page site that only scrolls upon clicking navigational links down the one page and things like that. And it's very obvious that this was built over the course of a day or a week. Whereas if, if your site, um, if, if your site looks like a, a normal uh, business site and has an about section, team section, um, maybe uh, on the blog, you don't have to backdate anything, but put some really great information there. Um, you know, one of the beauties of the internet is that you could be founded the same year um, or one year or two years ago. And after a couple of years, you're already can be an authority in your space. So you have the ability to hit the fast forward button there a little bit, um, which is cool. So um, the next question that comes in is that you had mentioned that e-commerce sites sometimes get less uh, targeted anchor text than affiliate. Um, maybe the e-coms get more branded anchor text naturally or anchor text that describes a specific product but is not a product name that people are searching for. Um, are there ways to better influence publishers or natural linkers to integrate um, either generic targeted exact match anchor text or brand plus exact match together when they do link to you if you're an e-com site? So um, if you have a really good relationship with them, they might be willing to do it. Um, or sometimes what I'll, you know, what I direct the team to do is create a little paragraph and submit it to them, <laughs> you know, just like, so they have to copy and paste it almost. Um, some authors out there, they, they, they actually just need content. So they'll actually have you write a lot of it for them. Like if you outline it and give them a lot of information and resources and things, and then you have a paragraph in there that links to yours. Uh, they'll probably maybe just copy and paste it if, if it makes sense and looks natural. What looks natural? Um, you know, so if you want if you want brand-based anchor text um, to a category level page, um, you know, say like let's say you want brand your company brand, not not the products you're selling, the brand and names you're selling or, or mentioning. I think that um, um, you know that has a tendency to come normal if it's like you're doing uh, coupons that are special to your brand, um, you know, special to that that group of products, but your your company or e-commerce site or whatever is the only one with those. Um, that has a tendency to to help because you'll probably uh, any sort of coupon codes based thing they use branded a lot. So if you can do coupon code based links, um, so if you're a major. Uh, if anybody on here is like a major owns a major couponing site or something like that, what I found in the couponing space is. Um, you can you can get brand based anchor text a lot easier, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially especially the category level pages. Great, thank you. Um, next uh, question comes from, I believe it's Yorin asks. There are a lot of prominent bloggers out there within multiple industries that have become very self aware of the value of a link from their site, and a lot <laughs> of the times they'll reply back. <laughs> uh, asking for money or some sort of compensation. Do you have yeah. any specific methods to avoid spending money on good quality links when you get that kind of reply back from a blogger or publisher? So um, have the content ready. Send them the content as they're doing it. If the content's good for their site, um, you're adding you're adding value to their site. Even if the first off, you may want to avoid those sites to start with. Um, but if they, if it's a real site and it has value, it has organic ranking, it passes the smell test, like it's a real site, they have real content. Um, you know, I use that shortly and that wasn't very descriptive, but I think you get the idea. Um, um, you know, I would go, I would definitely make the pitch and create the, create the content, show why it's better than anything else on their site that targets their audience, create a real pitch. 
and maybe they'll take it for free. But if if they're six, if they if they want paid, and their site is is uh, 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 it just has a high DA, no, don't don't even waste your time. Uh, go after another site and, and put the time into that content. Yeah, you know, um, some of the the things that I'll do or have done in the past is with uh, influential publishers is doing co-branded pieces or co-branded studies. Where we'll be like, hey, look, we're putting together this study. Uh, some of it's proprietary data, some of it's used data, but we're putting it together in a very, very new setting. Uh, we'll be able to co-brand this with you if you're willing to not only publish it on your site, but also promote it to your audience, right? Because I think one of the things that's definitely lost, especially when people are looking only at DA, which is a totally can be totally manipulated at the end of the day, is the reach and the audience, the readership, and then even something as simple as the rankings of a site as well. But if you can go in and talk to one of those publishers and work together on something, it's like the best of both worlds. Because not only do you get the link, but then you also get your brand introduced to their readership or their audience, whether you're doing a giveaway, whether it's a co-branded piece, you know, the giveaway thing kind of blurs the lines a little bit with the Google recommendations on paid linking and stuff like that. But um, there's ways to also kind of build that relationship beyond just paying for a link. Because typically sending someone a couple hundred bucks and then getting something in return does not lead to a relationship. But working together with one common goal can. So I, I found that to be fairly, fairly useful at the end of the day. But thanks for bringing that up, not just looking at DA, right? But looking at yeah. the value of the site. The, um, Metrics and quality are different. Metrics and quality are different. Exactly, exactly. Like your example of the low DA site uh, done by a scientist in the field or the industry. Um, had a question come in about all of the tools that you were recommending and using, whether it's Ahrefs or Moz or SEMrush, formerly known as SEMrush. Um, do all of, do those tools work internationally, or are they only U.S. or English language targeted? How have you found them working in an international basis? Uh, SEM Rush has a lot of countries in the AHREF is the second, and Moz is third. So a, uh, SEM Rush is out of Europe. Um, uh, well, I know they have a, a U.S. office but found in Europe. AHREFs as well, I believe, a, a, a Asian company, um, yeah. and. So they're they're global. They do very well. If you're looking for Asia, there's a Dragon Search. Um, I forgot the guy's name who owns it. Dragon Search is a great uh, tool for um, uh, Asia, um, uh, excluding I think excluding India, um, but more traditional other parts of Asia as well. So um, there are tools out there. Dragon Search for that. Uh, SEM, uh, SEMrush. I keep saying SEMrush. I know they changed it. Uh, SEMrush. Uh, I, it, yeah, it, it does, and it has um, limited data. So if you do Australia, for example, I know the numbers are higher in Australia than they claim. Um, yeah. And so like uh, Australia and UK, the UK I think are good. Australia, I haven't been impressed with the numbers there, but they have a lot of other countries. Uh, Ahrefs does do a little bit of country-based stuff. Um, um, uh, Moz, I, I've never used it on a country level. I've always used SEMrush uh, as my default just because the data seems a little bit more robust, not saying accurate, more robust. There's more of it. You bring up some good points. Most of the tool companies are not based in the US. So the fact that um, they are not probably means that they are a little bit more use, can be a little bit more useful internationally. And then also in the Asian market, that's the only market where you're going to have different search engines per country now, right? You're going to have Naver in Korea, um, Japan's transferred a little bit over to Google, but it used to use and still uses Yahoo as as, as a pretty important <laughs> engine, right? And then it kills um, me. It you kills know, me. in China as well. Yeah, so I do. Yeah, it's really crazy. Um, got a lot of thank yous in here. Thank um, you. And I think we're about done with time. Was there anything else you wanted to mention uh, before we sign off? Yeah, you know, I think that um, you know the big one of the big takeaway here is unlinked mentions, finding articles that exist, and then being able to get inserted into those articles. It doesn't have to be an unlinked brand mention, it doesn't have to be a broken link, it doesn't have to be any of that. Uh, it is highly contextual. It's probably one of the most contextual things that you can do. Here's the problem with the industry and where we're at today. So 
our technology is not advanced enough. Our technology is still archaic in link building. A lot of it's still manual. Like there, there's some tools out there that are helping to, to, to automate a process on, on finding these mentions. I literally had to build my own search engine in order to do something. Like this is something where this is an old freaking industry and we're still building technology to handle these little tasks. Um, it, it's unfortunate. I, and anybody on this call, like if, if you ever have, um, you know, uh, questions about technology and what to use, I'm trying to push, I'm trying to really push everybody in the industry to, to make advancements, to push for these companies to add, you know, to get these features like SEMrush. Ask those guys to get like the email automation component into it. How do you do that without becoming spammy? How do you close the loop on automating all of this? There's a, it's very time consuming. Unlinked mentions are a very easy way to secure links and e-com and affiliate, but we have to, we have to automate and, and like evolve the industry, especially from a technology perspective. Um, you know, so you know, anybody push your, your technology provider to add these more features, get more automated, integrate machine learning and um, robotic process automation or full AI into the systems to make this easier. I think, I think our industry is being left behind a little bit uh, when it comes to the technology advancements. And I think we need to push that forward. Absolutely. I also love unlinked mentions because um, at the end of the day, it's not a cold call or it's not a cold email, like they've already talked about you, right? Or they've already talked about the brand, usually in a positive light, sometimes just covering some news or something like that. So the fact that they've already done that and you can email with a thank you, and then instead of just saying, hey, please, can you please drop a link to the page? You can also add in top of what they've covered from a content perspective, right? So maybe they link to, you mentioning that you you know sell treadmills that last X amount of years or whatever, and you can say, you can write back saying, well, we've also done this study on the best treadmills to utilize from a longevity standpoint, especially for runners, you know, and then and then there's a relationship there, and on the agency side, a publisher relationship can be worth ten times, a hundred times what it may be worth on an in-house side as well. So I really love the un of linked brand mentions UVMs open up that channel of conversation and build upon it. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, thanks for all the reminders to get out there and exercise, Mr. Rowe, between, between the treadmills and everything else. Uh, it's a nice little reminder of what I'm going to do this afternoon. Uh, for everyone, uh, another reminder is we're going to be following up. Any questions that we did not get a chance to answer, we're going to try to answer, send them to you in the recap, again, along with video, links uh, to some of Kevin's uh, resources, studies, and guides, and everything like that on the Pure Link side. Uh, join us again on Wednesday, March 10th, for a uh, webinar that I'll be hosting with Shopper Improved on how they increase organic traffic by 400% with automation. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, go to searchenginejournal.com right now, find the webinar on the sidebar, and sign up. Kevin, it's been a real treat. Thank you so much for joining us today. I always really enjoy hosting you, whether it's on a podcast or a webinar, to talk about linking. And it's refreshing to talk about someone, talk to someone about linking who has quite a bit of experience and can uh, dumb it down a little bit on the level that even I can understand. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.